All right, guys, so here we are right inside your Honda CRV. Congratulations, the EXL. We've got the big nine inch touchscreen. You can see that everything is on right now. We're gonna go over here to vehicle settings. Let's select that. We're gonna go through all these photos here and show you how to set things up the way you want it, okay? It could be a little overwhelming at first, but don't worry, we got you right here. So you have a tire pressure monitoring system. That's gonna be the first one right there. It's an indirect tire pressure monitoring system. So if the light comes on, it's time you to get out there, double check it, make sure everything's good, make any adjustments if you need to. And then you can reset that by simply hitting calibrate and then boom, everything's taken care of, all right? I do have a video that goes more in depth by your tire pressure system, check that out. Now, next one right up here is to be a driver's assist system setup, all right? This is where you can customize all of your Honda sensing features. Now, great thing about this is we're going through this stuff. You guys will see that will give you a little summary in time you hit an option, so you don't have to memorize this stuff, all right, uh, from that point. And then also here off to the side, it's gonna show you what you have selected to as well. So that's kind of nice. So if you kind of go back, wanted to do a little quick changes or just confirmation, it's there, you no know, additional steps you have to take. Now let's talk about your 40 collision warning distance. Like I was talking about, it talks about a semi right up there. This is, for example, when you're driving down the road, it senses you're gonna hit an object, a car, or something like that in front of you. It has a three stage before it, it warns you. Uh, from there, like, hey, apply onto the brakes. You don't do anything fast enough. It tries to slow you down. Then it tries to stop you too as well uh, from that point. All right, your forward collision runs off that front camera on that windshield up there. Honda has it as a default normal. I'm gonna keep it on normal from that point. Your know, owner's manual will actually tell you the exact distance between those from there too, okay? Now, the next one I'm gonna have is your ACC, is your Adaptive Cruise Control Vehicle Detection Beep. I'm gonna assume you guys already know what your Adaptive Cruise Control is and how it works. Now. So every time you have your adaptive cruise control on, a car gets in your range, it finds it within an adaptive cruise, it's gonna beep at you right now, okay? So it'll let you know, hey, I'm slowing down because I found a car in front of me, all right? So I'm gonna keep that on. Next one is gonna be a road departure, all right? So this is simply that it keeps you on the road as it brings you back to or from when you're going off the road out of your lane, that kind of stuff. You can change the sensitivity on that or just have it as warning only. I'm gonna keep it on normal, so when we take it out for a test drive, everyone can create an opinion from there. Now you have your lane keeping assist and spin speed. So simply when you go off the road from that point or out of your lane, it senses that you're crossing over when you shouldn't be, it's gonna beep at you to let you know, hey, you know, you go out of your lane, all right? You have your blind spot right here. So you gotta have little indicators over there on the side mirrors. Um, so every time someone's in your blind spot, it lights up. Like you can see that little photo right over there, it's gonna light right up. Then the only time it beeps at you, it talks back to you, is when you have a turning indicator on while someone's in your blind spot, all right? So we'll keep it on just like that. Scroll down here, traffic sign, recognition system. Yeah, so the runs off the camera, it's gonna be right up there on the front windshield. And it finds a speed limit sign, it's gonna throw it up there in your driver's interface right here in front of the steering wheel. I'm gonna say, yeah, let's keep it on, because only the other option is to turn it off. Now, you're gonna have this bad boy right here. So, let's say you're driving down there the road, it finds the speed limit, and it senses you're going over the speed limit, do you want it to warn you? I'm gonna hit yes, because there's a follow-up one for this, okay? You got this right here, it's gonna warn you when you go over from that point. For example, let's talk about like, uh, you can do it at a speed limit. It's gonna beep at you, it's gonna warn you. You got three, five and 10 miles an hour. All right, so that's great. Maybe you want to do a little speeding. Now the speed limit is 55 and I'm going, I'm sorry, it's 55, then I'm going 60, it won't warn me, but once I hit that threshold over 60, the car is gonna have this flashing right up there for me to let me know, hey, Chris, you're speeding, slow down, all right? Your driver's attention monitoring system, the car is, knows the difference between the wind pushing the car stuff around and you're just doing a very bad job at driving. And I'm gonna turn this on, because most likely you guys will never experience it, but if you do, you really want it to alert you, to let you guys know, pull over, take a break, rest a little bit, and be safe out there on the roads, all right? Now you get your rear sensor settings right here. They're simply gonna be on from that point. You can turn these off if you want to. Uh, from there, it also affects your low speed braking, as you can see from there. So, let's just keep them on. Now, that's everything there for your safety features that you can mess around. You got more of kind of a meter setup right over here. Some of the stuff like in the house, you can adjust your outside temperature. You can fine tune that within a five degree swing either way, positive, negative, stuff like that. I'm gonna keep it on the default. Your trip A and trip B, you can choose when you want this to reset automatically by itself between those two options or just have it as a manual reset. 
trip A and B are gonna be the same settings that you can do if you wanna change them up. You get your adjust alarm volume right here. This is like your door buzzers, turning indicators, you know, system warning, stuff like this. You can see it right in there on the description and you can decide how loud that's going to be. All right, fuel efficiency backlight is really just a cosmetic thing. It's gonna tell you when you're being fuel efficient. It's gonna be right up there above your digital speeder meter uh, as you're driving um, on the driver's interface. It's gonna be a green bar that's gonna display up there saying, hey, you're being fuel efficient. All right, then it goes away when you're not. So I guess we'll keep it on there so when I know my fuel efficient game is awesome. All right, so you get your turn by turn auto display right here. So that's gonna be kind of nice. We don't keep that on and you guys can see what that is right there. So, boom. If you need to change at all for miles, you can. We'll keep it on miles. You're gonna have your tachometer, all right? I love having the tachometers over here on the driver's interface. Um, I'm not gonna move the selfie stick over there, but if you turn this off, the tachometer will not always display um, up there, no matter what you have selected, you actually have to select uh, tachometer before it actually will display. I like the look. If you don't, you can turn it off here and clean it up. There's less going on, all right? Rear seat reminder. This could be simply so, let's say we got the car on and running now. If someone gets in and out of the back door right there and, you know, the back seat, and then when I shut off the car, it's going to have a rear seat reminder on the driver's end front saying, hey, Chris, double check. Make sure you don't leave your cargo, pets, kids, that annoying friend back there. Take them with you. All right. Now, that's everything underneath meter setup. From there, you got your driver's position set up. You got your memory link position right here. It's on. So there we go. So let's go ahead and keep that stuff linked up for your two-seat memory. Now over here, it's gonna be simply turn this on and off. So when I shop the car, the seat's gonna move back a little bit for me so I can get out a little easier. And then when I get in and I turn on the car, my seat's gonna move forward up a little, okay? Um, so that's kind of nice. We're gonna keep it right there. If you don't like that, if you find that kind of annoying, just turn it off. Now we got keyless access setup, okay? First one up here, driver door unlocked. So this is when you have the key fob in your purse, your jacket, your pocket, close to you, you walk up there. Put your hand in the handle. What door or doors do you want to unlock? Driver's side door only. It'd be great if it's just you most of the time or all doors. If you're you know, having a lot of people with you quite a bit as a family vehicle, all right? Now, there's going to be a delay. So when you put your hand in the handle, stuff like that, uh, between it locking and unlocking. So do you want some visual confirmation that it's unlocked or locked by the lights flash? Why not? I can use all the help. So this one less thing, you to worry about the kids in there to yanking on the handle, stuff like that, okay? Now, since you get the visual, do you want an audible? Right there. Yeah, let's do this. So now it's gonna give you a little beep when it unlocks or locks in there. Remote start. If you ever wanna turn off remote start, you can. You can deactivate that from here. But we live in Iowa, so I'm gonna keep it on, all right? The lockout prevention, look at all this. If you ever, ever want to lock your key fob within the car, you can. I'm gonna keep this thing on here. So simply, let's say you take your key fob, you get your key here, you leave this inside the car. It's the only one you have, you can lock this in the car from there. All right, by turning that thing off. It's on now, so I cannot lock this in the car. All right, so now that's everything right there from that point. We're gonna come over to light setup, auto high beam, on or off. You want your auto high beam to come on automatically? There we go. Enter your light. So all these settings that we're going through right now, this is at the point where we shut the car and we shut the front door, all the doors are shut, and then that's when the timer starts. So from that point, 30 seconds right now, the interior lights will turn off, okay? Or 15 seconds, whatever you guys select. Headlights, auto off. So this, I can see a lot of people maybe play around a little bit more depending on when you get home or even when you're at work, stuff like that. If it's not a well-lit area, you need a little more light. Hey, just a little more time to get where you're going to see you as you get things out. So right now I shut my door, the car's off, shut the door, I got 15 seconds. Maybe I parked somewhere. And on the back of the parking lot, in 30 seconds, when I get to you know to work, because I can't see, it's in a well-lit area, whatever the case is. You get auto light sensitivity right here. 
Okay, so how soon do you want your auto headlights to come on? You got some options. I'm gonna keep it on normal. All right, so when you turn on your wipers, your headlights automatically come on. How cool would that be, right? So you get a little daytime raining, get those on, headlights automatically come on. Now we're gonna scroll over here. Door and window setup. Auto door lock. So you just got in the car now, you're about to drive off. What do you want your doors to lock up? What option works for you guys? I can see a lot of people, especially my wife right now, shift to when you shift from park, because she always has the kids running around doing errands. For me, I probably do it with speaks. A lot of times it's just me and the, my own car. All right. Here we are with the door unlocked. So you just arrive where are you going? When do you want your front door? Oh, actually, all your doors unlocked. Okay. Um, if it's just you, there we go. You got a peace of mind. You can shut the car on driver's side door, or when that opens, or when you shift to park, or when you shut the vehicle. What option is going to work for you guys? The walkaway auto lock feature. I'm going to turn this bad boy on just because when I'm done with this video, I walk away with the key fob. I know the car is locked up. So every time you have the key fob and you walk away with the key fob, no keys left in the car, you get so far away, 10 feet, boom, it locks all the doors for you. You don't have to second guess. Did I lock my doors? Oh man, I left some stuff out there in the front. See, I'm worried if someone's going to get into my supplies. Don't even worry about it, okay? So you have the pre lock setting right here. This is pretty awesome. I really like this feature. It's one of those little things that gives you know, a nice little whatever. Just because, let's say, for example, the kids and I. Okay, I'm a little quicker than the kids. I'm not a very patient guy when I get in and out of the car. All right, the kids, they like to mope when I pick them up from school, especially my youngest, Cameron. He's very good at this. Getting his book bag, stuff like that. He's always the last one to get out of the car. Well, let's say if you don't have the walk auto lock feature on, some people don't like it, so they keep it off. This would be a great thing. So when I shut my driver's side door and all the other doors, you know, still open, I can hit lock on my key fob, pre-lock setting. So as soon as they shut their door, boom, all the doors locked. Okay. From that point, that's what that is. I'm going to keep that on. They have a keyless answer back. So there's a hit lock, unlock stuff like that on the key fob. You're going to want this private flash, um, or answer, sorry. Yep. Flash lights at you. All right, so you can have your, uh, there we go. This is for those that don't want the window control. What this is, the window control is if you hit lock, double tap unlock and hold that down for a few seconds, roughly 10 seconds, your windows, moonroof stuff like that would open up, right? Well, if you don't want to do that because you're afraid you accidentally can uh, open things up while the key fobs are in your pocket, your purse, whatever the case is, you can turn that feature off, just hit off from there, okay? So you can deactivate that feature. Now we have your power lift gate set up right here. Keyless open mode. There we go. So anytime, pretty much when you want to open it or just when it's unlocked, you can actually open that tailgate. Because if it's locked, then you have to unlock it. Now have your hands right on here, make it a power manual tailgate. Pretty nice and easy. Then your maintenance, anything for maintenance related, you got to reset some of that stuff. We're right here for you guys, okay? That's where it's going to be at.